Want to see the backyard? Kind of cluttered, but it's being worked on. They're having a party in September, but I think I'm going to go to town. Hot tub just got fixed, too, if you want to jump in, and it's kind of hot. I got in it the other day, and it felt good, though. It actually feels good. Because <laughs> it's so fucking hot. Alright, so what are we doing? Looking at stuff? Oh, you want to look at art on the way in? So I don't have storage right now. And I have tons of art. I mean, this is some of it. I have stuff stored at other people's houses and stuff too, because I have so much, but... So I just started putting shit out. Just a Tobin photo of Mickey and, J and uh, Jim Devo bombing Corbett. Back in like late 80s, I think. I love that picture. Uh, Chris Johansson. I used to shoot his shows in San Francisco in the 90s, like, you know, like, slides of his shows and galleries, and we trade for work. And I have, I think, other drawing, maybe, but I don't, can't find it. Blayback photo of Deirdre and Big Black. I pulled that out when Big Black died last year. I thought I was kind of just thinking about him. This is a uh, Mickey Ray, as Tobin shot this in the 80s in SSF, it's in some warehouse. And I remember, I think I was maybe looking at it, and he's like, you can have it if you want it. <laughs> Mickey was sick. I don't know, he did, Mickey's fucking big, like a gorilla now, so I don't think he skates anymore, but he was fucking one of the best skaters back then. Holy shit, he was so good. And then this is a UFO photo that John and Barker shot off our back. So if you look at this though, this look really does, it looks like one of those fake UFO photos from like the 20s or some shit. Um, it was two plastic paper plate holders with a flashlight taped inside of it. And you'd throw it, and at night it looked like it, it was fucking all, it was rad. Up here I just have a bunch of crap that I was gonna hang in my fridge. Barry McGee sticker, painting Ed did me years ago. It's crazy, 96. Photo Brad David shot of me doing a tail tap at like Miley or something, some bank. I'm wearing a scarf. Oh, like Backside Slappy back in the 80s in Houston. Look at that board, it's like probably a Tom Knox Santa Cruz board or some shit. Oh, this is the last time I saw Harold. This is at the trade show in San Diego in 2004, I think. That's fucked, he died two years later, it fucking sucks. Um, and then, so, oh, and then Roxanne Lowett, I used to be a photographer that I worked for, and she's just fr family friend at this point. Um, that's Shalom Harlow, she's like some supermodel in the 90s. I love that picture, I think it's rad. Um, Joe Roberts, this is pretty rad. This is funny because I just had this stuff in um, in here and I just hung it up. This is a pretty rad thing that he made. So two drawings that he gave me and then me and Joe used to share a studio, so I have a lot of shit. But this is a sheet of acid that he made. See, it's perforated. It's not dosed, but I always thought, what if like the cops thought saw this and they thought it was a sheet of acid, but they'd have to test it. If it was dosed, you'd be, but they could probably put you in jail for having it. I don't know, could they? It's like felony to have acid, right? That's Rita Lino. She's like one of my favorite younger photographers. She lives in Berlin. She's Portuguese. She made a book a few years ago, kind of just like documenting her life, like a lot of self-portraits. She does a lot of self-portraits. That I really fell in love with and was inspired a lot by, and then I hit her up on Insta, and we never met, but she seems like a really cool chick. And she was in Japan when I was there in, in April doing this thing, but we didn't cross paths because we were both too busy. Um, then this Hiroshi finger that Huff made, it's pretty rad. And there's a bat too that hopped with Thrasher. I fucking love this thing. And I keep it in my room. And this is like my only weapon that I have just in case someone broke in my place. I guess I could probably kill someone with this or fuck them up. <laughs> but like here, I want to look at the books. This is like my main bookshelf where I have most of my better books. I hate to say that because there's so good books on that shelf too. But this is like one that won't fit in here because it's big. 
And then, like, I have, like, favorite books. Like, this is my favorite book of all time. And no one's ever heard of it, probably for sure. Super obscure, really hard to find. I got this book from Larry Clark in, like, 1997. Because um, Larry and Daniel, Daniel friends. Danny Seymour paid for Tulsa to get printed. This is a good one. Larry Clark, Teenage Loss is one of my favorite books. It's really, it's kind of reminds me of the that I grew up. Um... And then this is, the, this is another book that might be like the best photo book ever made. <laughs> like right, as far as a narrative story, this guy Larry Stolen, it's a book about his parents. That's like pretty fucking unbelievable. I don't know, I'm really photo nerd and I like books. Oh, there's a cool Rocky book I got in Japan like, last year. I find these rad Japanese books that are really hard to find here and buy them because you can't get them over here and they, they end up probably being worth a lot of money. I don't know. I probably wouldn't sell it, but... So there's a book I made in 2015. It's Dusty. About Lenny Kirk. That took like 20 years, pretty much. I mean, it's like a 20-year story. Um... So Lenny was a pro skateboarder in the 90s. He was living in San Francisco. Um, when I first moved there, he moved there like after, you know, I don't know. He was just kind of, they used to hang out in my flat a lot when I lived there. And there's a story about Lenny's rise and fall, basically, like became a pro skateboarder and was doing all like, this good stuff. And then he hit his head and Got in another accident, and then he got saved by Jesus. And then he went to fucking prison. And got out, and then he went back to prison. And he's still in jail. He's supposed to get out. I think he's getting out this next year. Which is going to be interesting. We'll see if he can pull it this time and stay out. But this was, this is like the, my first major project that I ever finished. The next one that I'm doing is I'm finishing now. And then I'm hoping to start another one this this year or next year in Italy. But I'm not sure if it's going to happen. Yeah, that's another thing.